Hey guys, now I know that the movie is actually, well, it's been, what, it's been in the box office now for two weeks and it's already gone under. My buddy Sean and I went and saw Alien Covenant on its release two weeks ago, and we had such a fun time talking about the issues we had, just kind of talking around what was going on, that we did a video uh, on my porch with me with an old microphone, just talking about the inconsistencies we had. We actually talked for about 30, 40 minutes, uh, so I edited it out what was kind of non-essential and whatnot, but we bring up a bunch of issues that I didn't even think about the first time we talked about it. Uh, the idea of how David and Walter kind of transferred, the idea of how no one saw the giant alien si uh, the engineer city when they landed, yet it was close enough that David could walk to them. Um, there's a bunch of things that we bring up, so I know it's a little bit kind of non-directional, but I would suggest you guys listen to it, because we're going to bring up a bunch of shit that you didn't even think about, but then you're going to be sitting back going, okay, wait a minute. It's not so much plot hole ideas, but we kind of ex we figure out how certain aspects of the story work, because we also talked about the novelization that was done by Alan Dean Foster, who in fact actually did the novelization for the first movie. So, yeah, this is just watch and see what you guys think. Hey guys, this is Jeremy here with my friend Sean. Uh, if you guys remember, we did reviews for the original uh, for Blade Runner and for Ghostbusters. We went and saw Alien Covenant two weeks ago, and we've both had a lot of ideas about this movie. More so just questions, because there's a lot of shit that just keeps on coming up that... What was it? After thirty minutes, the thirty minutes after the movie ended, we were still outside the theater, just kind of questioning, "How did this work? How does any of this occur?" And probably one of the biggest issues that we keep on going on about was why did David destroy the engineers? Yet Shaw, like, where did Shaw fit into it? Well, you have a character in uh, Prometheus who's all important to the story, the main character, is given... Well, she's given the starring role, right? And then you alien three her to death. Yeah. Between was... movies. And only hint at her demise. You don't even explain it. Now, if you're going to create characters, and you're going to kill them off flippantly between films, that's one thing. But if you're going to get the actress back to film other stuff, and still kill her off, that gets silly. Even sillier is when you end a movie on a hopeful point, and then you just completely drop the bridge on the character, and don't you don't offer any explanation. Well, yeah, that was something um, that this film did that was probably one of its biggest issues was it had a really interesting marketing campaign. Like, I'll have to say that's probably one of the reasons why I got into it was the marketing campaign, and also that poster. And then the marketing was really good, too, because we had The Last Supper with James Franco, who also kind of gets Alien 3 in this movie, and we had uh, then kind of the prelude to what happened with David and Shaw. So the fact that we saw them get to the planet, and then it cut, and then we're like, okay, so we'll figure out what that means in Covenant, and it totally drops the ball. Shaw wasn't the greatest character I've ever seen characterization-wise, but I still I still enjoyed her character, and I still felt like, you know what, I want to see her survive. I want to see her get some answers, at least get some answers, because she's been through hell. Well, yeah, considering she had the worst C-section of all time. Exactly, like that, that was a fantastic scene, and she goes through hell, and then to just have her die, or have her be killed between the movies, with no explanation... They introduce this character who has this conflict of, fla of faith. He's worried that his faith is what's going to kind of make the crew undermine him. Well, and he brings it up. He, he himself brings it up. He truly believes that he did not get the position of captain originally because he was a Christian. Yeah. Or, and, they, and they make that a huge point, and then they just drop it off yeah. the face of the earth. They mention faith here and there throughout the movie as the character continues but they don't really do anything with it. No. Well, that's the other thing, too, is it kind of connects into how quickly people are killed off. His wife is killed off, and it, admittedly, that was a cool scene when the thing, like, burst out of the guy's back. That was cool, and that was... That the was, whole scene was fantastic. Yeah, that was its version of uh, the, the pod scene, if I will say. There's, that was the scariest scene 
in the movie to so, me. It's so intense. And, and, and the, one, yeah. the actress who was playing... Tennessee's the, the wife? wife? Or, oh. Okay. Um, the one that's freaking out. Yeah, she's like, let me the fuck out. <laughs> no, the other one. Oh, that was Tennessee's wife. Okay, Tennessee's wife. Both of them were fantastic. Uh, Until she Tennessee. blows up the ship. Well, no, no, I'm not saying that's stupid. I mean, it was just... You can't accept you. Can, you can't expect people to be really logically. Oh, on the wall. obviously. Just saw something explode. Well, exactly. Well, oh no, definitely. But the thing, the thing that I thought was weird is she had it on the net and she shot at it, and I swear she hit it right in the in the she center. Did, she didn't hit it. It just it just Raise takes it? bullets like a champ. Oh, okay. So, but I love that whole scene because um, it was just so well done. The, the fear you could really feel it. From oh, yeah. the characters, it wasn't just like, "Oh my God, alien!" Ah, yeah, no, it was like sheer terror. I don't know. I, I kind of thinking about it now. I I'm wearing, wondering why I didn't point it out. Um, they go onto the planet, yet all of them go. They don't send Walter as a scout, and they also don't. Uh, what else do they don't do? They don't have helmets on. See, there was um, there was some talk about the the novel explaining things, and the novel was apparently written from the original script, the shooting script. Lots of scenes were omitted from the uh, the movie, and there were certain things that were explained. Apparently, that uh, Walter did check on things first to check for pathogens and stuff, which allowed them to to go out without the helmets. Sure, and that worked out so well, though, in the end. Well, you can't like that's the thing with the spores is they're only active when there's people around, so there's, they're not going to be around. Um, well, two, another thing that should have been in the movie that was in the, the novel is that. Um, when Billy Crudup is being shown around the Little Shop of Horrors, uh, David explains that he's been trying to create something. He found, um, he found like fossils or remnants of the xenomorph and the eggs in that, oh. and he's been trying to recreate it. So that's apparently what that big egg was in the room was actually an original. Oh, so that wasn't his creation. No, technically. In the book, he was just working to try and Oh, okay. Awesome. That makes sense then, because again, like a lot of people have been coming up with the idea that he's the one who created the xenomorph, and I was like, no, I bullshit. Ridley got saying he was, but the book says otherwise. That's what I mean, man. I don't trust Ridley anymore. Like, I know he was super meticulous when he used to be. Like, he's the reason why Alien got, what was it, five million more dollars in budget, because he did all of the uh, the storyboarding himself he did all he gave fox all of these storyboards and that was how they were able to get that movie on the track but now i don't know man this was what i felt was the two of the worst things was it was an attempt at trying to be both alien and aliens at the same time in terms of horror along with action and it's well it's not is is ham handily also it made the xenomorph completely nullify like i was not afraid of this thing the thing that was so cool about how it was shot well admittedly three and four didn't really do this but one thing that was always great about one and two is that they didn't show the full creature it was always hidden yeah and when he did sh a few shots like that with the xenomorph when it was on the ship and it was hiding that was cool but then, when he showed it in full, I was like, this thing isn't that, it kind of looks stupid. Which is weird, because they were able to do that in Alien AVP, and I will admit, it's scarier in AVP. But then, because they still were using, they used some prosthetics, and the guys with the tail. I feel like the movie was supposed to be a Prometheus sequel. I know it was, but I feel like there was almost no effort made in adding the aliens to it. I feel like they made a Prometheus sequel and tacked it on, having the aliens in it. It was a sec. It was an added idea because that was something that Scott had talked about. Is that Prometheus was, like, what do they call it? A quasi sequel or suzai sequel or something that it it's re it's in this yeah it's in the same universe, but it doesn't directly have any relations. And people were kind of upset about that. David, his whole character is, just makes no sense. I'll do the fingering. He's he's gone from being a mysterious, intentioned android to a cartoon villain. <laughs> oh, that that part was so stupid. That's what I'm saying. It's the way he's acting. But, it's just so cartoon. Well, when you've been well, yeah. That's the funny thing too. Is I guess maybe just from the damage he took because he was he did get his head ripped off. So maybe. Well, like Bishop it, was fine, and he was worse than that. But Bishop didn't survive for nine years by himself. He was 
Bishop was in a cryopod. How did David know they were on the planet? What do you mean? How did David know that there were people on the planet? There was no scanning equipment, and they were far enough away. So how did he know they were there? Oh, yeah. I guess maybe he just heard the gunshots, but still, yeah, that's, but that's kind of convenient. They make it feel like it's far enough away. I mean, if the lander had been anywhere near an ancient ruined city, they would have seen the city first, not thought it was an empty planet. Yeah, because they, for they're scanners. able to run to it. They walk to that yeah, thing. Yeah, that makes no sense. Yeah, actually, wow, that's even worse. But something... Like, they scanned the whole landscape and picked a perfect place to land. Don't you think they would have picked the giant open like, oh, field of death? This big, there's this big empty area here. I mean, if you're landing on an empty planet to see if it's suitable for life, wouldn't you... Why didn't Mother pick that up? Why didn't anyone pick that up? Well, then again... You can see it from space at the end of the movie, for God's sake. But then... Oh, yeah. But there's then, that one shot with the, with the, with the yeah. covenant where you can see that city well, below Well, then again, it. how they go to the planet in the first place is just a... Oh, well, they must have just missed it. I think in the, the planet was hidden intentionally with technology. And the same solar flare that damaged the Covenant knocked the technology that was blocking the planet out, which would explain also why the transmission suddenly appears. But this, it comes from Tennessee's helmet. It doesn't come from the ship's helmet. I know, but at that point, they're also picking it up from the ship. They say in the movie that it's happening constantly now. Well, Tennessee's helmet was they. Made, yeah, but they, they were also they, they were. With that excuse saying that oh you were far enough out like. Yeah, but he was far enough far, far enough out for a while and not, nothing happened. But he and then like, he gets the transmission like and then they say it's constant. He was like a hundred meters away from that thing. That doesn't make any fucking difference in space. I know, but I'm saying is is the transmission suddenly appeared and then continued. It didn't just like not. They didn't just miss it. Like he was out there repairing shit and then he caught the transmission and then they say it's happening constantly now. Guess. So it was just suddenly up there. It was still very con. It was very plot convenient. I Everything it was, was plot convenient. Well, and then one other thing that kind of. Well, I meant that I could understand why David was odd, because again he had been on the planet. Because he'll for, do the fingering. Yes, <laughs> he had been on the planet for ten years, and no, gosh knows how long he had been in the travel for. He hadn't gone to sleep during the travels after Shaw fixed him. Assume. So clearly there was something going on with him. It reminded me of Ash. His ass started to lose his marbles a little bit. They gave him a whack, right? And then he starts going, spinning around. This is the thing that I felt was, aside from the scene on the ship, when the guy's getting all the, he's getting all the bat crazies, nothing was really scary about this movie. Like, when the guys are going into the room and the face huggers are running around, it's like, well, they're dead. That was the thing. Like, no, not that. Everyone, so stupid. Oh, everyone in this movie was a meat shield. Well, not just that. How does that thing impregnate him being on his face for six seconds? Yeah, that was another thing, too. We saw it cut, cut off his face, yet when they try to take it off... Oh, wait, what is Kane? When they try to take it off Kane... Yeah, but he movie. was incapacitated. Yeah. Because we all know that's what it takes. They have to be under for a few hours for it to happen. Yeah, exactly. Not a few seconds while they're oh. awake. And then, yeah, when it came out of Billy... Oh, Crudup. Crudup. When it came out of Crudup... Oh, that was that was awesome when it started like... Bleh. Blah, blah. But, but then great. it but then looks it does like, like a baby xenomorph in a stand instead of being the that was, snake like Well, yeah, it, was, it wasn't It was a snake. It was an already formed creature, which made, again, no sense. Unless that was just David fucking it up. But yeah, that's the other... Th the one thing I was kind of wondering was, like you said, if everyone's dead on the planet, how did he have the means to even create these things? I, don't, I didn't see any advanced technology. You can't really no. splice genetics with a scalpel. True. Yeah, no, that's what I was thinking. Is like, how did he make... Like, okay, if I'm supposed to believe that he's done anything with these, sure, he could take apart bodies. I mean, but... it looked like Da Vinci's workshop in there. How was he doing it? Yeah. But another thing that a lot of... This is something that I thought was really easy to see that a lot of people have been questioning was how Walter was David. And some people were saying, oh, how did David have the time to change his clothing, cut off his own hand, and pretend to be like Walter? When it seems simple to me is that he gives him that that uh, that quote at the end. Would you rather live in heaven or reign in hell? And it intrigues Walter after the terrible Marvel superhero fight that they had. By the way, that was a stupid fight scene. But I feel that he passed his consciousness. David allowed, sorry, Walter allowed David's consciousness to enter his own. So they're both. And that's what I made me think at the end, though, is who is in control? Is it David or is it Walter? There's a little asterisk there, though. Walter has skin healing abilities. Well, yeah. I guess that's And why he's I'm... cut up. And the stupid main character didn't even notice. 
No one seemed to notice. His skin heals. Walter's skin heals. That's part of his design. You see it earlier in the movie. So why is it he has to staple his face and has the main character help helping him? How could it be Walter if his own basic functions are no longer working? Oh, for fuck's sake. Now that just breaks what... Oh, what? Now, okay, that totally breaks then what I was thinking. Yeah, because remember, this, they, they pay a lot of attention to the scene where he's he, like, like, healing himself. Yeah. In both circumstances. Oh, he even says, it's like, we have more... Exactly. We're the more artificial... We're the more upgraded version. Yeah, and you can see his skin healing okay, the, wow, the hole. Okay, wow. Throws... But then later on, she says, I'm just going to help you staple your face here. That totally throws out my whole idea then. That Yeah, that does make no sense. But in the end, why so would the only Wal explanation but is Walter that had the upper hand in the Walter fight? Walter gets fucked, and David cuts off his own hand, changes his clothes, and and then goes off on his merry but way it, in the course of ten seconds. Well, his hair wasn't even the same as Walter's. Like was, Walter's was, was buzz. Walter's was buzz. His was all like. Woo. It was all woo. At the end of the movie. Hmm. I don't know. Oh fuck, man! That just totally destroys my entire. That it made sense to me. Like, I'm hoping that maybe it was too severe, that it needed time to heal. Maybe it wasn't an instantaneous healing thing. It was just thing. little cuts. It was a severe... Right, so, so you're saying... Him? What cut him, anyway? Oh, it was the knife. Well, David's knife? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because remember, it gets tossed partway through the battle. Oh. Uh, here's the thing, though. These little slices don't heal, but the giant gash that was uh, two-thirds of an inch wide heals instantly? No. That was that was not that was not Walter. It had to be David for that reason. Oh man, that's even worse. Then that totally destroys everything I had. The thought of. <laughs> wow. See, this is the problem with this film: is that we've constantly kept on coming up with new things. The more we talk about it, the more holes you find. And some people are like, "Oh, why are you being cynical of that?" Well, why you not? know, why not? Because it's been twenty years since the last Alien movie. <laughs> and. And Scott wants more of these. And think, think about this way: is we're cynical about this. It's been 20 years since the last Alien movie, and we were both seven years old when that came out. So it's not like we have much right to be cynical. What about the people who have been Aliens fans since 1979? Yeah, what are people who are still trying to figure out how the hell that ship al arrived on LV-426? Even if you were only 10 when Alien came out, you're still going to be 48 years old. This movie doesn't explain how far are we off now. 20 years, 20 years before for, for the first Alien movie now. And Ridley Scott wants, what, two or three more of these fucking things? One more? Well, he's already started working on it, apparently. Well, hopefully it makes it make sense. I'm not entirely happy with the movie, but I'm not going to... If there's going to be continuation of the story, if there's going to be a resolution, I'm going to wait until the last one to be bitter about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I enjoy the Star Wars prequels. I, I, I'm at peace with episode one. And I like episode three. I don't like episode two, but having all three of them together, especially capped by episode three, it was a much stronger story. The writing is still terrible. That that doesn't mean that I they're don't enjoy it. They're necessary evil. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't think three are evil inherently. <laughs> but not getting into that, it's the same way as um, it's like a painting. One third of it's painted. It's not going to look good. But once it's done, you can see the whole picture. Well, that's and I'm hoping that's how this is. Well, something too that has to be explained is David went on that whole rant about how he wanted to destroy his creators. Like we are the ones who are meant to replace them. Yet, after he's put Tennessee and I cannot remember her name into the cryopods, and he somehow regurgitates some thing, some uh, embryos, embryos, which again makes no sense because. We've learned that the face huggers have to, like, it seems that they have a limited lifespan and they have to gestate and then they'll die. I don't know how he made one this big and then it's gonna, like, expand and kill someone. But he also went on the rant that he wanted to destroy humanity, so why does he continue the ship? Because humanity survives. I'm guessing the thing maybe he wants. Well, actually, it's funny because as Because they're restricted by. by Alien and aliens. Well, that's yeah, exactly. Which again, they kind of. The only thing I can think of is that what he's going to try and do is he's going to go to the planet, and then when everyone wakes up, he's going to basically create himself. He's they, he's got all those people to use as lab subjects, and something will happen. But an engineer has to incur. An engineer has to appear and grab the ship, or grab one of these aliens, a queen. Like David's probably going to create a queen. Or something along that lines. Just waiting for mother. Yeah, that was. Yeah. So I don't know. 
It's perfectly safe. <laughs> That's the thing. He's such an idiot. Such an idiot. In Stick that your movie. Face in it. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, we, we in, I don't know, I could say that I didn't mind Alien Covenant, but it answer it gave way more questions than answers. And, and when not, you're dealing with not one intentional of the most questions either question movies ever, Prometheus. You don't want to follow it up with something even more heinous in that regard. Well, that was the thing. Like, I was happy when Damon Lindoff was taken off the... Well, he wasn't part of the writing team anymore, because I, I can't stand that guy's fucking writing. And yet, John Logan does even more Damon Lindoff without even connecting any Damon Lindoff in this one. They, the questions that we're bringing up aren't just intentional questions, but they're questions about how the film structure even works. Because it doesn't. And this problem is, there's probably some things that we will never be explained. Like, he, I don't think David's going to go on a tirade explaining the exact uh, occurrences of how he killed Shaw, how he released the alien, the, the alien virus on the engineers, why this planet is as small as it is, considering if this, as you pointed out, or uh, like a few weeks ago, that if this is the alien homeworld, how come there's only like one little sank of people? So. These are all things that we're kind of pissed off about, but also kind of interested to see how the last movie, last movie, ta tackles it. But I'm not holding my breath, because like I said, if, as long as Ridley Scott's in the director's chair, I just, there's sometimes you have to let the series go. Anyways, guys, yeah, it kind of ends on a note, but uh, the camera ran out of battery at that point, and we just, uh, Sean had to go. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a little random, I admit, but uh, the dialogue, I think we brought up some pretty good points. So anyways... If you want to discuss Alien Covenant and any of the things we discussed down below, please do so in the comments, and we'll see if we can make sense of this freaking movie. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. See you guys later.